I've got, what would the world be like without HRP? Total anarchy. <laughs> I think what is amazing about HRP is that the member states had the foresight 50 years ago to set it up, giving the space to be able to do research on things like contraceptive methods, the abortion guidelines, gender-based violence. We have done some incredible work on postpartum hemorrhage, safe motherhood, self-care interventions and digital technology. We're amazing. <laughs> when we talk about gender, we're talking about the issues around power, the issues around injustice, the ways in which women have to negotiate the spaces around them in order to fulfill their sexual and reproductive health and rights. So it's not enough to have the, the best possible equipment. It's not enough to have the most highly trained, um, competent professionals if there isn't a consideration of how we work with people and treat them as people. And we within the health sector need a significant dose of humility to be able to recognize the impact that that has on the outcomes that we actually seek. We're looking to a future where talking about sexual health is not a taboo, is not stigmatized, is not considered inappropriate for any culture. We need to work to ensure that sexual and reproductive health is considered part of an essential universal health coverage package. Health is political, sexual and reproductive health is, is political, but if we have the evidence to back it, we can actually push back against the resistance that we have to the area of work that we do.